Welcome to Cozying Up with the Clear Cut, where we get up close and personal with women that inspire us. This week, we're cozying up with A.G. Lineberry and Caroline Gilroy, co-founders of newly launched bespoke fashion platform, Cooper. We discuss all things fashion, sustainability, and how to pick the perfect wedding guest dress. Hey everyone, and welcome to Cozying Up with the Clear Cut, where we get up close and personal with women that inspire us. Today, I'm so excited to sit down with the co-founders of Cooper, A.G. Lineberry, and Caroline Gilroy. Did I say that right? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Yes. Hi, Olivia. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. Yeah. I, no one ever gets it right for me. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm so excited to chat. Um, I want to learn a little bit more about I know you guys have backgrounds in fashion and tech and kind of how you got together to create Cooper, which is specializing in like limited edition, one of a kind, like fashion pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, And you guys have beautiful stuff online. So tell us a little bit about yourselves and your backgrounds before founding Cooper. Great. Yeah, we can hop right in. So I think um, it's important to note we started working on this about a year and a half ago now and we actually just launched in august of 22 which is really exciting so what it's been five Five months months now congrats (laughs) um but it all kind of started when i was going back to my career in tech i was on my second maternity leave i have two little ones a three-year-old and a one-year-old and i just realized that there was more out there and i wanted to do more and we saw this opening within the fashion industry so I had the tech experience. It had been a while since I had been in the fashion industry and AG had always impressed me from afar with her incredible career, which I'll let her touch on. But it was a random Sunday and I approached her being like, hey, do you want to start a company? And here we are. Um, How did you guys originally meet? Through her husband. Through her husband. (laughs) Yeah, they went to college together. Okay. It's actually a funny story how we first met. We, oh, that's true. Uh, we're really sidetracking already. <laughs> I'd but, love to hear but, it. <laughs> but we did meet at a blackjack table in Atlantic City. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I saw like blonde Caroline walking up in like Jack Rogers Shut seven up. years ago. <laughs> it was so good. Um, that's how our friendship started. Yeah. <laughs> we're all good things start. All good things start. Blackjack tables in Atlantic City. Yeah, correct. Yes, correct. Yes. Um, but yeah, so it was a random Sunday and we kind of put our heads together. My background, I started my first job at Tory Burch um, where I was a buyer and then I went into the tech space where I was at Salesforce for a while always working with small businesses and AG yeah I'll go <laughs> go kind of into my history um so I went to school for textiles I studied like fashion development product development all of that type of stuff um and I went to I moved to New York right after school and I went to work for Saks and I was there for a little while. And then I was at Rebecca Taylor for almost six years, I think. And by the end of my career there, I was leading brand visuals for like retail, wholesale, e-commerce. And then I moved to Veronica Beard and I was really part of the you know massive Veronica Beard expansion in terms of opening, I think, maybe 15 stores during my time there. And when Caroline approached me, it was kind of like a epiphany moment that we would be these perfect two peas in a pod type of thing because she had the tech experience i had the corporate fashion experience neither of us had really like run a complete business before um but now you know we're both kind of learning how to be business women as well so it's been really exciting (laughs) yeah totally i always say you're like building the rocket ship like as it's in air correct that's (laughs) the best way to put it yes (laughs) So um, what was your inspiration behind Cooper? Like what white space did you see in the market that you thought you guys would be able to fill? Yeah. So, I mean, when Caroline and I sat down, we really thought that like the world didn't necessarily need another fashion brand, right? Like it's quite an inundated landscape. There's a lot of homogenous product out there. And so we realized that was kind of like the biggest white space is no one is really focusing on these more curated, more specialized, more limited edition pieces. And we really wanted to start valuing clothing and product as these wearable works of art, you know, and really bring back that kind of specialized um, look at fashion. So when we were thinking about really how we could build the business, it was focusing on these exclusive collaborations where like you would be maybe one of 15 people to have this item, just like it would be special to own, you know, one of 15 works of art that Picasso did, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of just bringing back that value of limited edition. And so much of the idea too comes from um, 
we bonded so much over, we would go to these weddings and you would see the girl, the, this girl wearing the exact same dress as three other people. So that's why we wanted to hone in on limited edition because it was so important to us that we wanted our girl to feel like she can stand out and feel really special and beautiful in our clothing. Yeah, totally. I mean, that I had 10 weddings last year <laughs> and it was really hard to like not wear the same thing it's as so someone true. else. So yeah. True. Even for the brides. Yeah. Um, so I love that idea. So, um, what were like pivotal moments that shaped your brand development? Um, and as like you conceptualized it to launch? That's a really good question. Um, I mean, you know, pivotal moments. Okay. This is kind of a few months into launch, like a month and a half into launch, I think. But when we had a WWD article come out about us, that's kind of like the end all be all of mm -hmm. like business fashion resources, right? Like that was so pivotal for us. And I think really just like lit a fire under our ass to be like, we can do we can this. Do like we've already built something that someone's recognized, someone of this stature is recognizing. And I think it just really inspired us and like felt us or made us be more empowered to kind of keep the business going. And even the launch party, I mean, I we launched the website on August 2nd, and on August 6th, we actually hosted at least 100 people in Montauk, New York, where we held wow. this uh, three-day, really, event. Yeah. And the first night, we did an influencer dinner where we co-hosted it with a designer, Andres Laura, who we're working on a beautiful collaboration with now. And... Uh, seeing people that you've admired from afar for so long wearing pieces that you truly believe in and being there to support the new company that you're launching was incredible i mean it made it feel so real and i think it really gave us again that kick in the ass where it's like let's get this thing going let's let's make this big for sure i think also just like performance that mm -hmm. week like seeing how many people turned up on Coop, on shopcooper.com yeah. and looking at sessions, that was like mind blowing. Caroline and I had a bet for like how much money we thought we were gonna do on our first day. I was so insanely off. Like I was like, no one's gonna get on the website. Like no <laughs> one's gonna have ever heard about this. And then we just like were kind of blown away, blown away by performance. So that was another pivotal like, holy shit. Yeah. Okay, we we're can do it. it. <laughs> One thing I really liked cause I was looking at your website was the pieces are very unique, but also very like approachable. Like mm -hmm. I thought when I first heard about it, I was like, okay, like museum worthy, like one of my kind pieces are going to be like in the thousands of dollars, but they were like very affordable for like what you're getting. So I think that is like really appealing too. Yeah. yeah we, we definitely want Sorry. to have a, um, you know, a, a range, right? Like we want shopcooper.com to be approachable for a 25 year old mm -hmm. who's going on and she maybe doesn't have a ton of money to spend on an event dress, but we're going to give her an amazing museum worthy piece that she can wear over and over again. Mm -hmm. And then we also want to have that offering for women, you know, who are maybe closer to 50 and they want a standout statement making piece and have a little bit more money to spend. So I think it's important for us to, to have a range and to really bucket ourselves in that like attainable luxury market. Approachable from a price point and yeah. also silhouette. Like I think it's important to note that you can make a sweater museum worthy too. You yeah. just need it to stand out a little bit more than what you would typically wear. And we actually did a collaboration with Fanmon. Um, and one of the pieces that we did was a sweater where we just had her design this beautiful embroidery and the feedback was incredible because it's a comfortable piece of clothing that you can still feel really confident wearing every day. Totally. And so how do you like source or connect with these emerging designers? Like how do you find them? It's our favorite part. I feel like people ask us that a lot and I'm like, I have no idea how to answer that question because it's so all over the place. We'll like DM random brands on Instagram. We'll have friends of friends connect us to people. We'll like scour their website for some contact email address. It's like it's such scrappy. a mixed bag. A lot of it happens when we're like scrolling through Instagram yeah. at two or three in the morning when neither of us can sleep being like, hey, have you seen this emerging designer out of Columbia? I don't think they like, we also always look to see if anyone else is following them. Yeah. and where else they're carried and it's a lot of the hunt yeah one like a good example another example i should say when we discovered Lisi Berry, there was this designer who like we saw in a Vogue article the 
she designed her own wedding dress and her bridesmaids dresses. Turns out we actually had friends of friends after we saw that article, but that was just like a fell upon it and made some magic happen down the road kind of scenario. And launched, we launched her first collection ever. So yeah. it's super exciting that we get to bring these designers into the world too. So what do you look for in a designer when you're looking to collaborate with them? Yeah, so we kind of have these like loose um, benchmarks, I would say. We don't like for designers to be on more than like two major retailers. Um, and then we also try and find designers that produce sustainably and ethically. Um, and then we want them to have museum worthy aesthetics. So we're not really a basics destination, mm -hmm. if you will. We really are more of that kind of occasion wear party girl destination. And all of those kind of come into AJ and I, everything that you see on the site, we truly believe in and it's our taste. So any item that you would pick out, one of us really, really believes in. So when it comes to designers, like there's definitely some where she'll bring them to my attention and I'll be like, I don't know what you're thinking there, but if you want to run with this, <laughs> go for it and vice versa. So making sure that their style and aesthetic aligns with what we believe in is probably the most important. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned um, that they have to produce sustainably and, and I've saw that on your website as well. So can you talk about ways that, you know, um, designers at Cooper, pieces at Cooper are more sustainable than maybe? Yeah, your... sure. I think that's kind of like a good way to talk about some of our collaborations. Like mm -hmm. um, I would give the example of like our Kalo collection, which is a really cool New York City based outerwear company. Um, all their fibers are produce, produced sustainably and everything's made in New York. And we actually used leftover dead stock materials to create this entire account. Capsule. So essentially, if you think about it, we produced three styles. We made 20 of each jacket. Um, so that's 60 pieces that that material would have ended up in a landfill mm -hmm. if nothing happened with it. So we really love going to designers and helping them offload materials that they're just sitting on and nothing's happening. Um, and frankly, like they would end up going to, to the, the landfill. So um, yeah, that's definitely one way we're focusing on it. Yeah, that's awesome. And I don't know if you've seen our accessories. Those are all mm -hmm. done by um, a vintage curator and then one other designer who we can touch on in a bit. But I think having that, you know, second time around, and we truly believe that vintage jewelry is where it's at right now. So being able to take a piece of art and then repurpose it, style it the way that we would and yeah. have it go live is De definitely. really, really cool. Yeah, and obviously we're a jewelry company, so I love the fact that jewelry is something that you never like throw in the garbage, yeah. find jewelry. It's always going to be like recycled, passed down. So when you're making something, it's not, it's it's hopefully going to continue its life mm -hmm. even sure. past your wear. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, amazing. So one thing I'm always curious about are like co-founder dynamics, <laughs> especially because my co-founder is my husband. So people always ask us about yeah. this. So what is it like, you know, having a business relationship with like your friends? Like, how do you guys balance it? Like, what are some tips that you can give to maybe some other founders who are thinking about starting businesses with their friends. Yeah, probably similar to that of your husband. Like this is very much so my work wife. So <laughs> now we're work wives. But you know, to be honest, like Caroline and I were totally friends before doing this, but yeah. we weren't like best friends. Mm -hmm. And I think that was kind of the best scenario where it was someone that we still had that opportunity to develop more of a professional relationship, even than a friendship. Agreed. And now we're like, I'd say a hundred percent equal. Like we're obviously, I mean, we definitely are work wives <laughs> at this point. Um, but you know, now navigating it, I guess some advice is just like, find someone that you trust and you can, you know, believe in that they're going to bring something else to the table. I know the way Caroline and I kind of navigate everything is by letting one another run with the thing that we know one another can run with. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like having trust in one yeah. another is the big thing. And yeah. I think for both of us, I, we're very, very type A people. So having control over almost every aspect of your life is always a goal. And in the beginning, I would say one of the struggles was, okay, we got 15 emails, AG, you're, you're actually taking these, I don't need to see them and getting used to that dynamic. Um, but we're just very respectful of not only both of our personal lives but also our professional lives too so and something i'm i'm personally curious about is like how how do you balance being like a full-time like mom and startup owner 
Um, I don't know if we have, I would call it balance right now, <laughs> but it's working. No. Or um, like manage that, like any tips? <laughs> yeah. I think, um, my biggest tip is just to know that chaos is going to be the name of the game for a while, but I'm very, very lucky to have an incredible nanny that's been with us since day one. And I always tell people take help where you can get it. Um, whether it's from parents, nannies, anything, I think the other thing is I always take time for myself during the day, even if it's 15 minutes to put skincare on. But early on, after I had my first baby, someone gave me the advice, like, just take a shower, have a second for yourself. And it's kept me sane for the past four years and through two kids. We'll see if it lasts through three. (laughs) Amazing. Hey, everyone. Olivia here. Hope you're enjoying our episode. Our clear cut collection features fine jewelry pieces inspired and designed with you in mind. Our collection is ever changing and each piece is handmade and made to order here in New York City. Don't forget to check it out and use the code COZY, C O Z Y, for free shipping on any purchase. So we're switching gears a little bit um, to talk about jewelry just because we're a jewelry business. Yes, of course. So do you have any pieces that are extra special or sentimental to you that hold like a little bit of a deeper meaning that you want to share? Yeah. You want to go in or me too? Yeah, I can hop in. Um, so I would say like my number one cherished piece of jewelry right now is the first push present that I got from my husband. Um, one, it made me realize that he actually like respected the pregnancy and understood. <laughs> I think what push presents are probably one of the most important gifts. I completely agree. <laughs> yeah. If you're listening to this and you don't know what a push present is, get on it ASAP. <laughs> um, but for my first baby, she was born in September. So he got me an infinity sapphire ring, which I wear every day when I can and I'm not 34 weeks pregnant and swollen. Um, <laughs> And then for my second, he actually put together a sapphire emerald diamond ring um, that I also wear every single day. Sapphire for my daughter, emerald for my son, and then my husband. May baby? May baby. And then my husband's April, so diamond. Three amazing gemstones. You got so lucky. I know. I plan (laughs) according. But those two pieces are just, they mean the world because (laughs) you can kind of look down and get a smile on your face at any point. Oh my God, I love that. That's great. Um, I I guess I have a couple as well. So this one is actually really new to me, but my um, mother and father-in-law just went to Africa and they found this tanzanite stone or they bought this tanzanite stone. Um, And I was inspired by a girlfriend of mine has her grandmother's diamond and she set it into like an 18 karat gold pinky style ring. ring. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I've been obsessed with her ring for ages. And when they gave me this round tanzanite, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to produce that exact ring, but with this stone. And now I'm obsessed with it. I love wearing it every day. And then secondly, I would say um, the gold band that I wear with my wedding band and my engagement ring was my grandmother's wedding band. Um, so I love that. It, um, it it actually perfectly matches the <laughs> like style of my engagement ring, which was a total coincidence. And it's like engraved on the inside. I think it says like forever yours or something Aww. like that. So that's a really special piece as well. Oh I feel like God. everyone needs a pinky ring now, though. I love this one. I, I need I one, one too. My well, engagement you, ring is. You a pinky better ring get on now. it, Olivia. Uh, my pinky is like so small. I have to like custom make it or something. Yeah. Size yeah. one. Please. No, I need to do it. I need to do it. Um, but I'm like. I was like eyeing it. Yeah. I was like, that is yeah. really cool. Obviously, I think we would both say our engagement rings as well. But yeah. that felt like too like, obvious yeah. of an answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Okay. So we always play like a little diamond game just for Yay. fun. Um, Do we get to keep them? <laughs> well, Great question. We can talk about that after. <laughs> um, we like to um, rate them oh. from 1 to 10, based on 10 being the best one being your least favorite and it's totally personal preference okay okay um and like why okay so we'll start with this is a 6.7 carat cushion it's set in like an antique style uh platinum ring with some accent diamonds on it okay hard not to like that (laughs) like is there a way to not like diamonds okay um seven I love the stone. I like it when the stone doesn't, is this, is mine called like a basket setting? 
Yes. Yours okay. Is the I like a basket setting more personally, mm -hmm. but I'm obsessed with this stone and I do like the vintage details. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go nine. Um, oh. This actually looks a lot like my engagement ring. I just added two stones on either side of it, but mine is set the exact same. And I completely agree with the vintage point. I think that this is gorgeous. Great. Thank you. So fun. Seven and nine. All right. Next, I have a very popular shape right now. This is an oval. It's a four carat oval set in a pave cathedral. Oh, wow. Gorgeous. I mean, wow, that's making me realize I need to clean my ring. <laughs> so I, I have to also. Um, I'm going to go nine on this. I okay. love how dainty and thin this is. Um, the stone looks gorgeous. And I just appreciate like how thin the metal work is. Mm -hmm. Like, I just think that's such a gorgeous style. I think I'm closer to, are we just going to switch seven and nine? We so might. Yeah, that's no. fine. It's okay. <laughs> I think that I'm a seven here. I think I'm, I liked the detailing of the first one more for me. Um, and I just, I'm not a big oval on my finger type of girl. Yeah. Totally fair. Amazing. Okay. Last but not least, we have uh, an 8.9 carat mm -hmm. emerald cut set with tapered baguettes. I mean. This one's yeah, very I'm casual. Like... This one's very, very casual. <laughs> this is like my next ring. Oh my god. I mean, I'm a 10. Are you kidding? I'm a 10. I'm a 10. <laughs> 10? And on it, I, I will say I'm not a 10 just because of the carrot size on this. I genuinely, like, I have a fake ring that I'll travel with, mm -hmm. and it looks like this with a smaller stone. Like, I love an emerald with tapered baguettes. I just really, mm -hmm. if I were to have a different style, that's what it would have been. It's a little bit of like an understated, elegant look. I agree. Look. Yeah. And to me, this this just looks like the ring that my grandmother used to wear. And uh, it's if I could uh, have a second engagement ring, Greg, I'm not leaving you, don't worry. Mm -hmm. um, but I would have this in a second. I mean, I just think it's so beautiful. And what are these called? Tapered, Tapered baguettes. baguettes. Tapered baguettes. I think that it's just such a gorgeous detail on For it. For your next push present. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. I need another April baby. April baby. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you would be a little late I'd on be a this little one. Late. Yeah. <laughs> an April baby. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for playing. Um, what are um, some of your top three fashion tips that everyone should know? Ooh, okay. This is fun. Um, my go-to is just unexpected layering. And I think it kind of ties back to jewelry too in a really great way. But I think pairing pieces together that you wouldn't normally expect um, is always really fun while you're getting dressed and also for people to see. Can you give an example? Yeah, for sure. I think stacking rings mm -hmm. and kind of playing with different stones and um, different finishes. I think when you're actually getting dressed, like for me, I'm only wearing dresses right now. So throwing, because <laughs> pants don't button for anyone that's listening, but um, throwing on like a really interesting vest and then a coat over. So you're seeing three different layers within an outfit and- And like mixing prints within mixing those and textures. Prints. Yeah. And for me, I'm always wearing <clears throat> earrings as well. And I have my triple holes. So kind of like mixing and matching different layers there as well. Yeah, that's fun. Um, I would just say like focusing on proportion is maybe my number one thing, like not wearing two super tight things together or two super oversized things together and making sure that like you're, if you're doing a slinky tight skirt, you're maybe doing it with like a more oversized sweater. Or if you have on really sexy top, maybe you're wearing it with more of a wide leg trouser or things like that. So just focusing on mixing proportion, um, and bring back the vintage bring back vintage that's i mixing, mixing old, old with new, new. Yeah, yeah we always say that we always say mixing old with new modern contemporary trend driven pieces with older vintage um at least vintage inspired type of items as well awesome and a high low i think high low is important focusing on one maybe investment piece mm -hmm. and mixing it with you know other things from different companies that are more you're going to wear it a million times and it's like a cheapy little piece. As I'm getting older, I'm more leaning towards like buying quality, yes. like investment staples. Yes. And then I'll be like, okay, if this is trendy, then I'll get it from like Zara to wear for the mm -hmm. season or whatever, exactly. you know? Yeah. 
No, that makes sense. We love a capsule wardrobe, you know? Yeah. I think that can be a misconception sometimes that like an investment or a, I should say an occasion dress, like you're wearing that to a wedding one time when in reality, like we love to rewear and we love to have 10 items that you can do that with and you can do that with for years to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just style it differently. Exactly. Like you can't go wrong with having like that black dress that looks great on you that you can just if you have to go to like a cocktail party sure. like put that on absolutely mm -hmm. um what's your favorite cooper style exclusive right now oh i keep saying the same one go for it i'm sorry um we did the collab that we were speaking about earlier with lisi berry and we have this blue italian um shantung one shoulder dress it's called the tracy in a print that Lisi designed and it has this velvet bow on it, um, which I think just makes it really evergreen. Like I would be wearing that in the summer because it's this light blue and then I can wear it in the holidays, holiday season with the uh, velvet. So that's my like hands down right now. We've had a lot of brides too, who have been using it as there's something blue, which oh, is really special. Um, and then the blazer dress is also great. But sure. my favorite piece I think is actually launching later today. Um, it's from a collab that we did with La Lion and it's gonna be part of our Valentine Valentine's Day capsule. So you can't find it on the site yet, but it'll be there today. How long do these exclusive last on the site? Everything's kind of different depending on the capacity of the brand that that um, you know dictates how many units we're producing um, or you know how much fabric they have left over. Um, so it's really a mixed bag. It it just depends on the size of the capsule. This one will be quick. I think we did about ten units in the sweater. So yeah, it'll go quickly. We wanted it to be a true Valentine's Day story, and we actually worked with a lot of their dead stock material as well on the ribbon detailing that you'll see. My favorite piece hit us. Yes, you want to know? I think is the. Inez dress. Oh yeah. Inez dress. From yes. This one. It's yes. from Goal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a dress that was honestly like loved by all, and that was also another dead stock exclusive, which was cool. She was sitting on that, um, on that material, and we went through her line and looked at her best selling bodies. This one's and we decided great. to do <laughs> that material in that uh, shape, and it. It really I think it's like so successful. perfect for like a like garden party really or something. Is. It's so sweet. It's such a good one. Um, cool. I got off track, off topic. <laughs> no, <it's great. laughs> um, so what is next for you guys? Like any more exciting projects? What's your vision for Cooper in the next couple of years? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's such a, such a long question to answer, <laughs> to be honest, but we really want to be this destination for limited edition pieces. We don't just want to be another mainstream retailer. We really want people to think of us as this destination for, um, collaborations for exclusives and for these wearable works of art. Um, but hopefully, you know, we'll expand into new product categories. You know, we're, we're in conversation about potentially launching, launching shoes next year. Um, and yeah. yeah, I think we're just hyper focused on growth right now from overall like product as well as our team. I mean, right now it's the two of us and then we have two other people within our operations department that are helping us, but we feel like we just need to be able to spend more time on our product offering and really working on these exclusives. So Hiring is going to be a big goal. Yeah, thus far we've we've really grown organically. It's been a lot of word of mouth. We really don't have a lot of money behind, you know, a ton of paid advertising or things like that. And so, like Caroline said, really focusing on growth over the next year and and starting to become a even more strategic company is going to be really important. Cool, awesome. Well, I'm excited to follow along on your journey. Um, where can people follow you, shop, all that good stuff? Yeah, for sure. Our social is just at Cooper, C-O-U-P-E-R, and then our website is shopcooper.com. Awesome, thank you guys so much. Oh, thank, thank you, Olivia. We're so, so excited fun. to have been here. Such an exciting conversation. I can't wait to try some of Cooper's exclusive styles. What's your favorite dress?